Hello again, Caesar here, and I'm going to do a little video on some winter clothing. Now, I had intended on doing like a full uh, winter breakdown of all my gear, kind of go through everything I take for my like winter kit, uh, but then, you know, after writing up um, on my blog kind of a full breakdown of everything I take, I thought, you know, I haven't done a video about clothing yet, uh, like clothing worn, so. Yeah, so I figured I'd try something new, and if you want to see a full breakdown of like my core winter kit, I'll put a link in the description below that you can check out to my blog. Uh, and as always, uh, usual disclaimer, this is not like a set in stone uh, kit. Uh, for example, I am checking the weather constantly uh, to see how the conditions are. Um, as, a, as a section hiker, you know, that's what I can do to kind of fine tune things. And... The temperature is fluctuating on the border between um, like some temperatures uh, that I, I kind of draw a line w with a certain temperature for two different pads. I have an um, uh, X-Therm and I have an X-Lite, uh, both by Thermarest, of course. I'm sure you're well aware, if you're watching the video, I'm sure you're well aware of you know, Thermarest pads. And yeah, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, just to illustrate my point, just a little example of... Things, you know, uh, of course, can change depending on circumstance. So, let me get to the clothing. Um, I guess I will start with something that I noticed in another video. Um, a guy named Alex um, did a video and he, he was uh, on talking about like winter backpacking. And he talked about gloves. And I, I actually I, I agreed that it's like a very, you know, like tricky um uh, to come up with a good system for gloves, and I gave some uh, some recommendations in, in the comments and everything. So anyway, Alex, if you're watching, this one's for you. I'll start there with the gloves because uh, that's gonna take a little bit more time to uh, break down the gloves because there's three pair of gloves. So I'll start with the the my liners. Now these liners, I've had these for years. Um, I actually I got these in Bolivia in like 2008 or 9 when I was in South America and I'm actually very impressed with uh, the quality of alpaca. I actually when I bought these gloves I did not intend on using them backpacking. I thought they were way too delicate because they feel very delicate, you know, they're very soft. I prefer alpaca to wool actually. I wish there was more alpaca options out there, but anyway, I decided okay after wearing them around, you know, just like, you know, in the winter, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to uh, take them backpacking, you know, I'm, you know, their gloves are meant to be used, let's put them to the test, and here they are, you know, many years later, after, and they're still warm, they only weigh like 30 grams, and uh, these will, I'll wear them, if it's colder, I'll wear them uh, to bed, or as like a liner, if it's, you know, if I need, um, but most of the time, I must say, when I'm hiking and I'm warm, you know, doing work hiking, I'll just wear these. These are just generic. I bought these at the hardware store. Cheapo and generic. This is probably like fake leather rather than leather uh, and synthetic uh, work gloves. Uh, and yeah, I can wear them over these two. So actually, I'll put them on so you can see how, how they fit. Easy to put on and off. Um, let me see here. So you got that to keep you warm. And then you got the work glove to block wind and also to um, protect the liner and then finally the last one the last pair the last layer here my glove system is this is somewhat new uh, I wrote on my blog how impressed I was with these gloves so I'll repeat myself and just say that these these mitts uh, are awesome I really like them very impressed with how waterproof they were and also the I was surprised by the um, amount of warmth too with these uh, three gloves uh, adding this on top you know, uh, it blocks, you know, not only water, but wind and keeps the warmth in there. Uh, so with these three pair of gloves, I'm confident going down to pretty cold. It's hard to say, obviously, but um, it would have to be pretty cold. I would guess like maybe at around minus 10 centigrade, I might consider, you know, uh, doing maybe adding a pair. I have a pair of goose uh, down gloves um, and uh, yeah, but anyway, it's enough about gloves. Um, as I said, it's kind of, you know, because it's kind of like a system with three. Oh, I guess I should put on, you know, just so you can see all three. All 
Alright. There we go. Not too tricky. And very comfortable. In fact, one thing that I think is pretty cool too, with all three gloves, I can actually still take pictures if I'm careful on the camera here, uh, which was a nice little surprise because all the layers are pretty thin. I can still manage to get the, if, uh, the, the button to take a picture. So yeah, there's that. Three pairs of gloves, very important in the winter time. I think another reason why I want to do a winter breakdown of, of clothing worn is because obviously there's more clothing and more like options and nuance to a winter, you know, clothing worn than like the summertime where, you know, it's, you know, not as important. Um, I shouldn't say that, not as important, but I mean, there's not as much, you know, usually. So, okay. And I can also pop this off with the liner still in there to put that on later if need be. So, yeah. Very happy about that. These gloves stay in my hip belt pocket of my pack. Let's move on to the other accessories before I get into like the like top and bottom layers. This is a buff. I recently replaced this because I I had a, another buff, a gray buff that I wore for years and I was very very happy with it. Marina wool, really like it. Uh, and um, yeah, the other one just got worn out. I, I wore a few holes in it and then um, I actually, right when I decided I needed to buy a new buff because I had to like stitch a few like repairs in my uh, other buff because there's holes and stuff. I lost it. So not that I think that means the universe or anything like that is talking to me or anything like that. But yeah, uh, it was good timing though. So here's my new buff. Love that. This is one of my favorite pieces of gear. Oh, and by the way, if you go to that breakdown I mentioned earlier, all this clothing is included like weights if you're into, you know, like you're me, you're like me and you want to count every little gram, you know, knock yourself out, you see like all the weights uh, listed there. Uh, yeah. Now hat, back to alpaca, I bought this with the gloves, both the gloves and the hat and a few other items. I actually bought on Ista del Sol in Bolivia, which is an island out in Lake Tricaca. And uh, yeah, wonderful hat from like a toothless uh, old lady who was there sitting on the ground and you know so uh, yeah and I still have this hat very warm and if you're ever wondering by the way what these are for I'll give you a little tip yeah they're not just for show if it's you know windy super cold right you can always do like so that's a little bit more you know self-evident right but let's say you're getting too warm out and you want to cool off your ears and your neck you can also do like so behind you know so they do serve like a functional purpose they're not just you know uh, for fashion because this is very fashionable okay now I'm gonna get through to I'm, I'm gonna take on uh, the most controversial thing perhaps of my whole uh, winter clothing I still get reactions to this when I talk about it on forums and stuff and that is my leather Converse all-stars I just waxed these with some mink oil uh, so they're nice and glossy and ready to go so they'll shed more water and I guess I should start by saying my philosophy on uh, shoes for backpacking is that they're going to get wet either from the inside or from the outside from sweat on the inside or from rain snow on the outside or the combination of the two so my my take on it is just accept it embrace it your feet will eventually get wet who cares so what kind of shoe can dry out easily and is easy to put on, take on, uh, put on and take off, and that you'll notice you know, these are very thin. Uh, there's not that much water that can actually be absorbed into these. It's like rubber and leather, and a very thin, you know, uh, liner on the inside. Also, I've grown up using these shoes very comfortable and relatively cheap, and um, yeah, I just really like them. So um, I know this is you know gonna uh, still continue to shock certain people, but um, these are my go-to shoes for for um, Converse. That is uh, for most of the year. I did recently buy a pair of like winter boots, um, but this winter because it was not that um, cold out, I did not have to use them. It wasn't that cold. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the chucks um, and. Of course, to go with that, you have some socks. So, I have a pair of thin liner socks. This is like a wool and synthetic uh, blend, and then I have thick, you know, 100% uh, wool 
socks to go with those. I was thinking about doing vapor barrier liners, like plastic bags, like bread bags, but on this trip I don't think I'm going to need it because it's not going to be that cold. Uh, yeah, and what I won't really, I won't, what I won't show is I have a couple of um, uh, items that I use to like sleep in. So I have um, like sleep socks, and I have uh, that's pretty much it actually on this trip because it's not going to be that cold. But oh well, one thing I won't show you too is my uh, Montbell. Alpine light down jacket or parka um, That's like in my pack when I'm hiking. I only wear that around camp and to bed if needed uh, So there's that and if you are interested you can check out my channel I do like a little mini first impressions review on it been very happy with that jacket Okay, so there's socks two pair of socks Let's move on here. I can kind of breeze through some of these things. It's not that exciting. My pants are just generic nylon hiking pants uh, in fact, it was a gift from a friend, my friend my dad. Um, he gave this to me, and yeah, uh, like I said, nothing fancy about that. Oh, one thing I forgot that goes with the shoes actually, and I have them in a plastic bag. Uh, this is a, these are my gaiters. These are Mountain Laurel, Mountain Laurel Designs uh, Event Gaiters, the short ones, and I'm very happy with them. The reason why I keep them in a plastic bag is I'm going to be taking a train up, you know, out to the trailhead. A train actually, a train and a train and a, and a bus, it's like way out there now. Um, and they're going to get muddy and dirty and all that on my way back. And also I don't, really, I don't need to wear them on the way there. So I keep them in the bag. When I get to the trail, I put them on. And when I get off the trail, I take them off and they're all muddy and dirty anyway. Put them in here, throw them in the pack, go home. Alright, so we covered that. So I'll, I guess I'll start with the... Base layer, this is the same old, if you've been following my blog, there's a lot of stuff that's you know, uh, you've seen pictures of before. Um, generic uh, pair of merino wool um, base layers. Uh, nothing special about them, they keep you warm, and uh, really like them. So there's that. Uh, tops and bottom merino wool. Over the merino wool base layer, I'll wear, this is a synthetic, uh, Adidas synthetic um, running shirt that I got at um, recently, this is actually a recent purchase, uh, and I really like that they have thumb holes, really nice because that uh, slips into the gloves too to block more wind on the wrists. And um, something funny actually happened when I bought this at, at the store. I bought it at uh, the guy helping me to find this uh, layer. Actually, he he's, this is the first time this happened. He actually follows my blog. He's like, oh yeah, I follow your blog, and you know, and I left a comment and I, Marcus and. How you doing? So it was nice to like meet a fan in person. He's very friendly. It's kind of bizarre when you know something like that happens, but yeah. So synthetic um, running shirt top. Um, then I have just a generic fleece uh, that goes over that. Now, if it was really cold, then I would bring a synthetic vest, and you know maybe another you know layer like a maybe double up on wind shirts, you know. But it's not that cold, so I'd be fine. And in fact. Some people might consider this to be overkill. The low is supposed to be like minus three, but there's been so many cold saps in my experience, you know, that I always kind of, and I write about this on my blog, like I always, you know, err on the side of, of safety. There have been several times when I've woken up in the middle of the night and it was much colder than the weather reports. So, uh, finally, I have my Montbell windbreaker or windshirt or whatever you want to call it. I've been very happy with this. I've had it for several years now. I bought it used, and um, I'm noticing that it's um, it doesn't block the wind as well as when I first got it. But it's still pretty effective. Still rocking. It's still going strong. I'm gonna run this into the ground and then perhaps look into. There's several different wind shirt options I've been drooling over, but I just don't need. I can't justify it because this works great. So, but I know Z Packs has a really nice um, uh, wind shirt or wind jacket. And um, yeah, but that's it for the tops. That's it for everything. That's the all the clothing I'll be wearing for this trip this week. I'm very excited. This is my last winter trip for the season. And um, now that I'm going further and further out in the middle of nowhere, um, it, I'm going to have to take kind of um, longer trips, which means I'm going to have to wait, you know, in between um, more time. You know, so I, because I have, of course, you know, work and, and, and family and all that. Um, so rather than go out every month, I'm going to be going out every other month. 
and doing longer trips though because uh, yeah I'm now out in the middle of nowhere in like centralish Sweden and it's getting harder and harder you know to work out logistics with the train or train train bus hike to the trailhead etc etc so yeah just for anybody who's following um, my you know the blog or my, my channel um, my trip reports are going to be kind of a little bit more further apart but they will be hopefully more extensive because they'll be longer uh, trips uh, yeah so that's that thanks for watching I hope this was helpful and goodbye